Hey guys, back in the shop with the Willys Jeep L134 Go Devil engine. Um, real quick, I wanted to show you guys uh, how to check valve seat concentricity. This is something most guys probably aren't going to do. It takes a very specific tool that can really only be used for this. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not something you see in most guys' garages, um, but it is an important thing to, to check. And when we talk about valve seat concentricity, what we're talking about is we want to make sure that this valve stem diameter right here is completely perfectly centered with this valve seat. So uh, we want to make sure that we don't have any run out. Sometimes they call it run out, I call it concentricity. But if this valve seat is perfectly centered, if the diameter, the center point of this valve stem and vis-a-vis -vis the valve guide is perfectly centered with the um, diameter of this valve seat, then we get really good heat transfer on the exhaust valves. We get really good sealing through the life of the engine. We get much longer lasting valves. So very important to have, um, you know, valve seat concentricity uh, within an acceptable range. Go ahead and pause it for a second, Nina. Okay, so um, the question is how much concentricity run out is acceptable. And if you ask, you know, 10 different machinists, you're going to get 10 different answers. Um, so I use a rule of thumb, you know, obviously zero is preferred, but we, we can't always get to zero. So a good rule of thumb is 2,000 of an inch per uh, valve diameter. So I'm going to measure my intake. I got 1.537. So 1.537 times 0.002 gives me about three thousandths. I can, I can have about three thousandths of an inch valve seat runoff. So let me show you how this works here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and give you guys an idea of what's going on. So this is the concentricity gauge and quite simply it has a probe right here that is going to touch off on the uh, face of the valve seat where the sealing area is and it's going to measure as we spin this around it's going to measure in thousandths of an inch how much um, concentricity we have. Um, these are hard to find. You can buy new, you can buy new ones um, on the internet. Goodson Tools obviously has them. Fowler makes makes a decent one. Um, I bought an old antique one off of eBay um, because I thought it was cool and uh, I like the old look of the of the old one. Um, this is a uh, Waterbury Hall model eight seventy. I can't imagine you'll find too many of these, um, but there is another one on eBay actually. I, I saw I bid on one of two and got that one. I think I paid about $85 for that um, with shipping. Um, and then I went to Goods and Tools and I got a uh, 3 8 um, adjustable pilot um, with I believe a 417 pilot top. So these these uh, Waterbury Hall gauges are 417 pilot top. Uh, I'll double check that and put it in the descriptions because uh, I don't have that committed to memory. But it, if if I'm thinking correctly, it was 417. So the way these adjustable pilots work is this is the uh, diameter nominal of your valve guide, which is what we want to be anchored to. We want to have a good centered point on that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to scoot this closer to our camera girl here so that we can see this. I'm going to go ahead and insert this into my valve guide. And there's a little knob here that expands the pilot to center it up and anchor it to the valve guide. So we're going to go ahead and put that in and then underneath here I'm going to reach down on the other side of the valve guide and tighten that knurled adjustment until this is centered up and anchored. And you see that's pretty that's pretty solid. Okay so that's step one um, and we know that we need to be within three thousand. So the next step is to go ahead and put now that we're anchored in the center we're going to take our concentricity gauge and we're going to drop it over that and I'm going to tighten that down and I'm going to zero the gauge out for right now that's we'll have to do it again later but just want to get that uh, in there and the next step is going to be to loosen this probe up right here and you can see now I can move up and down because I, I got my probe off of the uh, the face of the valve seat and I'm going to move that over just ever so slightly onto that valve seat. I want to be careful that I'm not touching this top plane of the valve seat. I actually want to be on the valve seat 
face where it seals with the valve and I and I am right there and then I also want to make sure that I have this preloaded a little bit so that you know we're not reading right off of the edge of the gauge so I want to make sure that I got plenty of room up and plenty of room down which I do so we're we're preloaded just a little bit we're right on that plane that makes up the sealing face so now we are uh, anchored we are centered up the tool is centered up on the center of the valve guide and the probe is reading on the uh, center of the valve sealing face and so what we'll do here is we will turn this and zero it out so you can see we're zero we're zeroed out and then we're going to sweep it and as we sweep it we're going to see how much run out we get and I'm going to make sure that I had it all the way at zero so see we need to go a little bit back more so here we go now we've got a good zero and I can count how much run out one two three thousandths exactly three thousandths of run out we are allowed a little bit over three thousandths not much uh, basically three thousandths so this valve seat is good it is concentric the, uh, the seat of this valve, which is going to be where this valve is ground and lapped in, is perfectly concentric within spec um, for, a, uh, for a valve that is, you know, roughly uh, 1.59. And you know what, guys, I just realized that I measured the uh, intake valve and I should have measured the exhaust. So it's 1.470. So we're allowed, it's, it's about the same because the, the valves are close enough. You're, you're allowed just under three thousandths and we're right at three thousandths. Um, so we're, we're good on this one, close enough that, that we're going to let it, let it go. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and measure all of those and make sure that they're, uh, you know, we don't have anything in spec. Now obviously, you know, if this was a race engine, you'd go try to go to zero. If this was a, you know, your daily driver or you're doing shop work for, for a customer or something, you'd try to get within that spec. But on this old, you know, Willie's engine, um, being right at the top end of the spec right there doesn't concern me. Um, you know, this thing, this thing's going to run fine and probably is is tighter than it was from the factory. Um, but that's how you measure valve seat con concentricity. You got to get a uh, three eighths pilot. Um, you can do, you can go one of two ways on the pilots. You can, you can either um, get, you know, a series of pilots that increment up in the in the thousand by thousandths of an inch, and that way it's. It's just kind of tapered and sits in there, or you can get an adjustable one like I got. A lot of guys don't like the adjustable ones, and if this was, if I was building a race engine, you know, something that was going to see high RPMs and and uh, and such, I I would probably go ahead and, and buy the series of pilots. Um, but for just kind of garage work on these on these older um, flathead motors, you know, the expandable guides in my experience, pilots in my experience work pretty well. Um, but yeah, guys, that's that's how you do it. Um, I I'm going to go ahead and measure the rest of these. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna film that. Um, but the next step after we get all this measured, I think we have our valve geometry kind of put to bed. Um, we're going to go ahead and install the cam bearing next um, and film that for you guys so you can see us installing the cam bearing. Unfortunately, I did not film us removing the cam bearing, um, but I think I can kind of show you how to do that while I'm installing the new one. It's really about the same process. Um, at any rate, um, yeah, we've got at least the number one exhaust valve is... Uh, is concentric and, and, and feel like we're going to probably get the same results on, on the rest of them as we go through. And, uh, you know, hopefully in the next video we're, we're putting the cam bearing in and maybe even the camshaft and, and the tappets and the valves and all that jazz. So thanks, guys. Appreciate your time, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.